Okay, so what we're going to look at first are what we call selection sets. And a selection set is a group of objects or as much as a single object that you are going to manipulate in AutoCAD. So if you don't have any objects down on your screen, such as I have here, I have no objects, so really I, I would have what you'd call a null set or, or nothing in a selection set. But once I begin to put down objects, so look, if I have, let's say a circle here and a line here, once these guys get selected, and you'll notice that when they're selected, they do two things. They highlight, which is this kind of blue look that you see to them. And typically they'll also get these guys called grips that are associated with them. And when we see these two things selected, you'll even notice up here it says that I have two selected. This is what's currently exists in my selection set, okay? So at this point then, once you have things in a selection set, you could manipulate them. So for instance, I could move them, copy them, array them, or even simply just delete them, okay? So the importance of this is that you have to learn how to select objects before you can actually manipulate them. Okay, so are you with me on that? Yep. yep. All right, so when you select objects, there's going to be a bunch of different ways that you can select them. So first off, let's talk about two kind of modes that you can use in AutoCAD. One is called noun verb selection, and the other one is called verb noun selection. So it really doesn't matter what you use in terms of how you're doing things, but it just sometimes it's easier one way or the other. So um, I'll show you the difference here and then we'll, we'll look at the different tools. And you might want to follow along with me here. If you just draw a couple of objects out there, so if you just draw maybe a circle, a line, and let's say a P line, just grab some objects down. Mm -hmm. okay. So right now we have objects but they're not selected, we can't do anything with them. But if we, let's say, we want to erase them, we've got two ways of doing it. We can select them first and then do the erase, or you can go into the erase command and then select the objects. So if I select them first, I'm doing what's called a noun verb selection. Noun being the objects, verb being the action that you're going to do to them. So for instance, if you just take your cursor to the line and left click him, he's highlighted, he's selected, and then you come up to this tool here, which is your erase tool, or you can just hit the delete key and you've deleted it. So what we've done at that point is what we call a noun verb selection. Okay, so be with me on that? Yes. Yep. And you are somewhat limited in the different ways that you can select objects if you do noun verb selection, okay? So it, it does limit your selection choices, okay? That's the only thing about it. But it's nice because you can get do things quickly. Now I'm gonna show you a secondary method here. If you go into the erase command, just click up here on that little pencil eraser, and notice at the bottom here it says select objects. So if you select objects, what we're going to do then is we can go in here and then say, okay, I'm going to select this guy and I'm going to select this guy. What you're doing now is building the selection set within the object or within the command. So the first thing we did was went to the erase command. That's your verb. Then when you're selecting objects, that's your noun. So you just hit enter. And in this case, it executes it. Okay. Everybody see the difference? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you do verb noun selection, you have the more choices that you can deal with, okay? More choices, okay? So we're gonna investigate um, noun verb selection first because that's the most simplistic, and then we're gonna go into uh, verb noun selection and show you how you get more choices, okay? So let's go ahead, we'll just put some objects back, put that circle, just like I said, another line. Don't be, don't be too particular with what you put or any location. I'm just dropping a bunch of different objects out here so that we can kind of see how they're going to interact with us. Okay. Is everybody ready then? Yep. Okay, yep. so the first 
choice that you have when you use selection of any type is what you call the pick box. And the pick box is the little box that's in the center of my crosshair right here, okay? If I take that pick box to an object and I left click, he has selected that object, okay? Let's turn this off. Come over here, select, mm -hmm. select, select, okay? Everybody see that? Yep. Yep. Now, if you have thousands of objects to select, you do not want to use that technique because you'll have to click 1,000 times. And then potentially you could miss something. Okay, so there's going to be some better solutions here. So if you have these objects selected, just hit the escape key and it should deselect them. Did that work for everybody? Yes. Okay, so here's another choice then. We have what's called a window or a crossing. So if you take your pick box and don't click an object, just pick it, you'll notice if you drag it to the left, you get a green window with a dash around. Is everybody seeing that? Yeah. If you drag it to the right, it becomes a blue window with a solid line. Everybody okay with that, seeing this? Options? Mm-hmm. So this is what's called implied windowing as a selection technique, and this is how this works. Very important, and you'll get used to it, but it's really a great tool. So if we go to the left, this is called a crossing window. And what this means is if an object crosses through that window, it will be selected. So notice that line, in my case, would be selected and the circle would be selected, okay? So if I pick a second point, Notice those two guys are selected. Everybody seeing how that works? Yeah. yeah. That's called a crossing window. Okay, go ahead and hit the escape key. If you just use a normal window, you just pick a point, don't pick an object, drag it to the right, now you get this. Now, the way this works is different. If the object crosses through the window it will not be selected the window must entirely surround the object that it's going to select so notice in my case i have a line and an arc that are going to be selected but my polyline is excluded and so is my circle so when i pick a secondary point notice polyline was excluded window was excluded because it didn't completely surround it does everybody see the difference yeah yeah so the thing is about the crossing, it's dangerous because if you're not paying attention and you hit an object with it, it's going to take it, okay? You get a lot, little bit more control with the window, but then, of course, you have to deal with a bigger window. So those are kind of your choices. Everybody seeing that now? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and hit the escape key, and I'm going to show you another option. I, I don't like this, but this is called a lasso. So if you just pick a point and then you hold it, you get this lasso kind of thing. So it's kind of a random little guy. I'm not a real fan of the lasso, but if you go one way, you get a lasso. If you go the other way, you get a window lasso, okay? I usually use the rectangular ones, or the, what they call the windows. Has everybody seen that? Yeah. Okay, so that's all you have as a selection tool when you are doing noun verb selection. You can either use the pick box, or you can use this guy called implied windowing, which gives you crossing, or a, win, uh, a, a window, or you can get the lasso window crossing, okay? So you're somewhat limited in the tools that you have, but they're actually still pretty cool, okay? Is everybody seeing that okay? Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is, do one more thing and I'm going to show you how you can delete objects from a selection set without deleting all of them. So if you do want to delete all the objects from your selection set, you simply hit the escape key and it deselects everything. But let's go out, we're going to select all of these objects. Right here. I'm sorry, what was that? Somebody talking? Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and select all of the objects. You can use whatever tool you want that's available. I'm gonna use a crossing. Oops. <laughs> all 
All right. You've got your objects selected. Everybody got objects selected? Yep. Yeah. So if you want to remove all of those objects, remember you can hit the escape key. That just kills them all. But if you, let's say we just wanted to deselect the line or let's say the arc or both of them, you just hold the shift key down and then you left click and left click and then you release, release the shift key and now you've removed those two from the selection set and you left the other ones in there, okay? So that's a really slick little technique to know because sometimes it's easier to select everything and then just remove a few, okay? Are we getting that to work for everybody? Yes. Uh, okay. That didn't work right. for me. Yes, what was that, Craig? I, did you, you just said hold shift down? Hold the shift key down, but you also have to left click on the object. So if I hold the shift key down, I have to come over here and then select the object by a left click. Oh, I see now. Yep. Okay. Yep. Make, making sense now? Yeah, I clicked on the box and it just turned it red. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but not the object, I see, yep. Okay, all right, we good then? Yep. That's a great technique to know because like I said, sometimes you wanna just select everything right away and then just delete a few things out of the selection set. So that's a good, good way of knowing how to do it, okay? All right, so, so now we're gonna to migrate to what we call um, verb noun selection. So you're gonna have a lot more tools as you get into verb noun selection in, a, in conjunction with the ones that you already have, okay? So pick box still works and implied windowing and, and crossing still works, okay? So let's go ahead and just deselect everything right now. Okay, I just hit the escape key. And we're gonna go into the erase command just because it's simple. So you can either type in E and hit enter, or you can just come up here and select that. But once you initiate one of those modify commands, that's your verb. So now you're doing a verb noun selection. And what it will ask you now at the bottom is to select objects, okay? If it says select objects, you can do multiple object selection. There will be occasionally the case where it will say select object, which means the only thing you can do is use a pick box as a selection tool, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is come over here and notice you've got a little pick box without the crosshair in it. Does everybody see that? Yep. So that works the same way. You just pick an object, you pick another object, you selected it, okay? If you pick dead air, you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get a crossing this way and a window this way, okay? Has everybody seen how that's working? Yep. Okay, so here's a real, go ahead and we'll hit the escape key and you might hit the escape, you may need to hit the escape key twice. I wanna go, I wanna back out of this command. So now we've got another little tool we can use, which is just called a, we, we've got a window, instead of applied windowing, we can use a normal window and what we call a normal crossing. Okay, so here's how you do this. Go ahead into the erase command again. And when it asks you to select objects, just type in W and hit enter, which will reference window. Now this case, you can do the window either direction. So if I pick a point here, notice I can go this way to get a window, or I can go this way. So what it's telling it to do is I want to do an exclusive window, not a crossing. Okay? Everybody see how that's working? Yep. So if I go over this way, I get a window. If I go over this way, I get a window. Okay? You can do the same thing with crossing. Mm -hmm. you type in C and hit enter you'll be in a crossing mode. If you pick a point, you get a crossing when you go to the right. You also get a crossing when you go to the left. Okay, and again, it's an exclusive uh, crossing kind of thing. Okay, is that making sense? Yep. Okay, hit the escape key, deselect that. All right, so they have another one that's called a window polygon and a crossing polygon. And in order to invoke those, you would type in WP or CP, okay? So if we go back again, hit the escape key, just make sure everything's clear and you might need to hit it twice. Go back up to the erase command, type in CP 
for crossing polygon and hit enter. And notice now when you pick a point, you can pick multiple points. It's kind of like a lasso, but it's a little bit more regulated. When you get done, you just hit enter and it's done your selection. If you want a window, if you want a window polygon, you would type in WP for window polygon. Pick a point, pick a point, pick a point. And then when you're done, you just hit enter and it'll close it. Okay. So there's not a ton of difference between the two, the window and the window polygon and the crossing and the crossing polygon, other than the fact that you get a rectangle in one and you get a polygon in the other. Okay. Any questions? Are we okay? Yep. All right, great. Go ahead and hit the escape key. We're gonna look at a few more of these little guys. Okay, make sure that your command line doesn't say anything. We're gonna go back up to the erase command just because it's convenient to use. Select objects. This time we're gonna look at one that is called a fence. Okay, a fence is really a neat little tool. It's Think of it as a one dimensional crossing window. Or you can think of it this way, is what you're gonna do with the fence is draw a line, and if the line crosses through an object, it'll select it. So we type in F for fence, hit enter, and you just pick a point, pick another point. Now notice how I'm selecting. If I completely surround an object with a fence, it won't select it, but if it crosses through that object, it selects it, okay? The fence is one of my absolutely favorite selection techniques because it's really quick. It's easier than dealing with an area selection and um, it's a great tool. Is everybody seeing how that worked, the fence? Yep. Okay. All right, go ahead, we'll hit the escape key. Uh, there's a bunch of these, by the way, so we're not gonna use all of them. I'm gonna just show you um, uh, what I call the highlights. And then if you like do some research in this, you can find other techniques that you can use, okay? Keep in mind though, all of the things that we're talking about, that window crossing, WP, CP, fence, these do not work under noun verb selection, only under verb noun, okay? So here's one that we've been using. I've had you use like kind of all, since the beginning of the semester, it's the all type of selection. So if you go in here and you hit erase, and then you type in the word all, and you have to type in the word A-L-L, -L, not just A, hit enter, it selects everything. Now this one can be dangerous because it selects everything in your drawing that it can, okay? Whether it's visible on the screen or not. So you have to be extremely careful when you use this selection technique, okay? But if you were doing something like moving objects and you wanted to make sure you selected everything to move, this would be a great tool, okay? Now, there are ways to protect objects so they can't be selected. And you have to be careful with that when you're doing certain selection techniques. And in fact, next week, we're gonna be talking about that a little bit. Okay, is everybody seeing how that's working then? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, go ahead and hit the escape key. All right, so another one we're gonna take a look at is called the last um, selection tool. And what this will do is select the last object that was drawn within the database. Okay, so all you do is go up to your verb. In this case, we're gonna use a race. Just type in L and hit enter. You should notice that one of, your, one of your objects was selected automatically. And in this case, it's with this polyline because that was the last object I drew. So I drew my circle first, then my line, then my circle or arc rather, and then my polyline. Okay, is that making sense? <clears throat> yep. Okay, so let's... Uh, Take the pick box and let's take select a couple more of these guys. So remember, if you want to remove them, all you have to do is do what? Hit escape. No, that will that'll dump you out of the command. I want to remove them from the selection set. So that's a little bit. If you were not in a verb noun selection, yeah, that would be fine. But in this case, um, it'll dump you out of the command. Gotcha. So what I need to do is hold the shift key and then take it and hit that pick box and pick box and pick box. 
and that'll remove objects, okay? Notice I'm still in the command, it still says select objects, and you're good to go. Does everybody see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so type in the word all. Did it select everything on your screen? Yep. Okay, so you are in what's called a add mode right now, okay? If you wanna to switch to a remove mode, you can type in an R and hit enter. And notice it doesn't say select objects anymore. It should now say remove objects. Everybody seeing that? Yep. Now your pick box, you don't have to hold the shift key. If you just pick an object and you pick another object or you do a crossing, it automatically is in a remove mode as opposed to an add mode, okay? So that just keeps you from doing the, the shifting if you don't wanna do the shift, okay? And if we want to go back to the add mode, we would just type in A and hit enter and now it'll say select objects, okay? So just keep in mind that none of this stuff that we just talked about is available unless you're in verb noun selection, okay? Only thing you have under AutoCAD or um, under uh, noun verb selection is your pick box and your implied windowing. Okay, is everybody good with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and hit the escape key, here and I'm gonna show you how you can do some uh, modifying if you like to do that. So make sure that your command line doesn't say anything in it. Take your cursor down in the graphics area and right click. You should get a shortcut that pops up and at the bottom it'll say options. So we're gonna go to the options dialog box. You can also just type in the word options and that works just as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go to options and this guy should pop up. Is that popping up for everybody? Yeah. Okay, so we go to the selection tab it's over on the right hand side go to the selection tab and you'll notice within this over here you have some settings that you can create okay so if you do not like noun verb selection you can turn that off in here okay so if you turn off noun verb selection you're you're nothing but verb noun selection i would say that's probably not a good thing because it, it gives you kind of the best of both worlds and if you turn it off you, you lose it okay if you don't want implied windowing on, you can turn implied windowing off, and that's what this does. Once you turn this off, then you won't have that ability to get a crossing or a window if you just pick no object. And if you don't like the lasso, which I'm not a real fan of the lasso, you can just toggle that off as well, okay? So this is a good thing to know. We're in what's called the option settings. We went to the selection tab. Be forewarned. Any changes that you make in this box, AutoCAD will remember forever. So if like you, for instance, turn off noun verb selection and forget how to get back to it, you may have to look that up be, to, to, to figure out how to get back in here, okay? So I, in general, I'm gonna leave my noun verb selection on, I'm gonna leave implied windowing on, and I even turn the lasso on. I don't use it that much, but uh, if you're not a big fan of it, turn it off, okay? If you didn't make any changes or you don't wanna make any mistakes, just go ahead and hit cancel, okay? Is everybody good with that? Yes. All right, perfect. Yes. So, so that's gonna be important as we get into the modify uh, issues tonight, which we're gonna be looking at. So we're gonna be spending a lot of time up in this box tonight, okay? Go over to quite a few commands and then uh, in a couple of weeks, the last week, uh, we'll be doing the rest of them in here, okay? But before we do that, I want to show you how to do what's called an object snap. And these are going to be really, really cool little tools. We've actually been using them just a little bit. Um, but these are going to basically now take coordinates out of your hands and kind of put them in AutoCAD's hands so that you don't have to think about delta X, delta Y that much anymore. Not that you won't use it, but you just won't be as dependent on it. And as an object snap, implies it is based on an object so you have to have an object to be able to get to this feature but here's here's the way to think of it that an object snap will harvest coordinates for you from objects that exist okay 
So that's the way I look at it. So we have a little tool down here in the status bar over here, and it looks like a rectangle with a little small uh, square or square with a little square on it. And what this is, this is your object snap menu. And if you open up that little drop down arrow, you will notice this guy popping up. Is everybody seeing that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So all of these things that you're seeing in this list are what are called object snaps in AutoCAD. Okay, now we're not gonna use all of them and I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I'm gonna go over quite a few of them because some of them are really useful. So notice we have mm -hmm. end point and midpoint, center, geometric center node, quad, intersection. I'm gonna skip extension um, and insert for now. Perpendicular, tangent, nearest, yeah, those are your best ones right there. You may notice that some of them have a check in front of them and some of them don't. You know, have you already seen that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you have a check in front of that O-snap, that O-snap is what's called a running O-snap. So what that means is that that, that O-snap is on all the time, okay? And it's running. So whenever you touch an object, it's going to have a tendency to pop that up and find that thing for you, okay? So that's why they're called running. Um, another way to use them is what we call in an override mode. And an override mode is pretty easy. I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can grab those, in other words, anytime that you want them. And an override O-snap will also override a running O-snap, okay? So you can override any O-snap anytime that you want. All right, is everybody with me on that? Now, if you have these guys turned on, um, as long as this box down here is blue, then they're on. But if even if they're checked in here, but that box is grayed out, so if I turn it off like that, even though those running nose snaps are there, they're not going to work, okay? So you have to do two things to make them work if you want them running. You have to check the ones that you want on, and then you have to turn that, that button on, okay? Everybody okay with that? Yep. Yeah. All right, so let's go back. Let's look at that list and kind of explain them, and then I'm going to show you how these work. Um, one thing about running O-snaps, I would suggest you don't want a bunch of them running, okay, because AutoCAD then kind of just does what it wants, and you're not paying attention maybe, and it grabs an endpoint, and you actually wanted a midpoint, so you have to be careful, okay? So let's look at the first one, the endpoint. Who can tell me what that's going to do? Anybody? Should it, when you click on it, does it put a box around the endpoints? Yes. So, in other words, it, it's only associated with objects that have endpoints, number one. So, that would be, in my case, that line, that arc, and that polygon, or polyline rather. And it will tend to find the endpoint for me. Okay. Now, because this guy has two endpoints, you kind of need to touch closer to the one end or the other if you want that guy to snap up, okay? Here's the thing you don't need to do though, you don't actually have to go to the endpoint for it to find it, okay? So you just have to touch the line and it'll find the endpoint for you, but if you want this one, you need to be closer to that end, okay? So any object that has endpoints will also have a midpoint. Okay, so right in the middle, you'll get a midpoint, midpoint of that arc. Now I have a polyline here that has an endpoint and an endpoint and an endpoint and an endpoint. So each of these vertex or these objects between the vertexes, they will all have midpoints. So that one, that one, and that one. Everybody good with that concept? Yeah. yeah. Okay, center. Center will snap to the center of a circle or the center of an arc or the center of an object we didn't even talk about called an ellipse. So it'll find all three of those. And again, you don't have to go to the center, you just touch the object and it jumps to the center for you, okay? So we good with that? Yep. Okay, geometric center is for objects that are closed polylines, but that are not things like um, real, reg well, they, you could use a regular polygon, or they could be an irregular polygon, but they also have to be closed, okay? So we talked about that last week. You would have to draw a P-line and close it. So this is a P-line, 
but it doesn't have a geometric center because it's not closed. Okay. All right, node. This is another object we talked about the other day. I think we talked about it last week called a point. A node will snap to a point object and that's the only thing it'll do is it'll only snap to a point object. Okay. Quadrant. A quadrant is associated with a circle or an arc. So notice it shows you four little symbols there. So there's four quadrants on a circle. One here, one at the top, one at the left, and one at the right, okay? So a circle always has four quadrants, okay? Now an arc, an arc doesn't necessarily have to have four quads. In this case, this arc would only have one, two quadrants. The other two are missing because the arc is missing over here. Does everybody get the idea? Mm -hmm. So an arc could actually have anywhere from four quadrants to zero quadrants. So if I took this arc and trimmed it so that this got trimmed this way and this got trimmed this way, there's no quad running through it, that would have zero quadrants, okay? Here's another thing. Do not think that quadrant means tangent, okay? Quadrant just means it's going to be this point. If you pull that line out that direction from it, it won't be tangent. And I'll show you that as we get to this here, okay? Mm -hmm. Intersection. Intersection's really cool. Intersection will allow you to snap to two objects that intersect on top of each other. So if I have a line crossing this line, there would be an intersection point. But is there an intersection point possibly between this arc and this line? Does anybody? Think that's true? Um, if I drew this arc all the way out as a circle, do you think it would cross through that line? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so guess what? AutoCAD could find that intersection for you even though there is no intersection there that you're seeing physically, okay? Mathematically, if there's an intersection, it will find it. Definitely, if you notice this line right there, and that line, they're not parallel. So there's somewhere out here in space is an intersection between those two. This, this little O snap will find that, okay? Perpendicular allows me to snap perpendicular to an object or perpendicular from an object. So that's a really neat little tool, okay? So you can either go perp to or perp from. I'll show you how to do all these here in a minute. So here's the tangent option. Tangent is truly a tangent command. So it'll be tangent to circle to arc or circle to line or whatever. So that's a great tool as well, okay? The nearest, nearest is gonna do exactly what it says. If you select an object, it'll find a point wherever you're selecting, but you won't know really where it is on the object. You know it's gonna be on the object, but not necessarily where it is, okay? Does everybody care of that? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you how to use overriding those snaps first, and then we're going to take come back and take a look at running. And they're both useful, by the way, so you want to get a handle on both techniques. So in order to do this, just come down here and make sure you just turn that button off, okay? Make sure it's grayed out. All right, is everybody good? Yep. So we can turn it off? Yeah, turn it off so that it doesn't show, if it's blue, it's on, okay? I just want you to turn it off so it's grayed out like mine is down here, okay? okay? Is, that, is that good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit so I can see all of my objects a little bit better. Does everybody have some uh, a circle and a line and an arc and let's say a P line? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's say we wanted to draw a line from the end point of this line to the center of this circle, okay? So we go into the line command and it asks you to specify point. Now, I need to know these coordinates up here. If you come up here and touch this line, you shouldn't see anything happening, is that true? Right. All right, so if you hit the shift key and right click, you should get an OSNAP menu that's popping up for you right now. Go and grab the word endpoint. Now come up to that line, select the line and notice, not select it, but just look, uh, uh, rest your cursor on it. It jumps out and it says, oh, you want an endpoint. 
Okay, if I want that info and I can left click, if I want that info and I left click, once you see that symbol though, you just left click it and notice it found that coordinate for you. Is that working for everybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're gonna do another shift and a right click and we're gonna find center. Just come and touch your circle anywhere. You notice that little symbol, that green symbol, when you get that left click and now you're in business. Okay, everybody see what we're doing? This is yeah. really important, so let's make sure everybody's okay on this. I'm gonna do a shift, right click, midpoint, come over here and select my arc. Notice I get that green triangle. When I see that green triangle, all I have to do is left click. You do not have to move your cursor up to the green symbol. Okay, all you have to do is see that green symbol and you can left click. Is everybody seeing how this works? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody not getting this to work? Okay, this is what- Can you do it one more time? Go ahead. Nick? Um, yeah, can you do it one more time? Sure, absolutely. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna escape and I'm gonna undo everything I did, okay? So I'm going into the line command right now, and it says, oh, specify first point. Well, if I come up here and touch this line, and I don't have O snaps on, I'm gonna have to override. So what I'm gonna do is do a shift and right click, and I get this menu popping up. Are you getting that menu to pop up? Okay. Did you get the menu to pop up? Yeah. Okay, when you see the word endpoint, left click on him. Now come and touch your line. You'll notice you get the little green symbol pops out endpoint. When you see that little symbol, you can left click. And what it's done is it's, it's found that coordinate value for you and it snapped it to it. Is that working for you? Hold on. <laughs> oh, I want to you one more time. Sure. Okay, I'm going to escape out of here. All right, you have objects like this down, right? Yeah. You have your O-snaps turned off down here, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going into the line command. Okay. It asked me to specify a point. So I'm gonna hit the shift key, hold it down, and right click. I get the right. O-snap menu that pops up, right? Okay. You see the word endpoint, left click on him. Okay. You're now in an endpoint mode. You just come up and select your op. Just just let your cursor hit that object, and it'll pop out, and it'll say endpoint. Okay, I got it. When you see that, you left click, and it just found that coordinate. Right. Okay? Now you're no longer in an endpoint mode. So if you want to go to something else, I just do another shift, right click, center, select my circle, left click, shift, right click, midpoint. And I go. Are we seeing how this works, everybody? Nick, did that work for you? Yeah. Okay. All right. The other thing, too, is just keep in mind you can go back and forth between this mode of input, but you could also say at two comma three. So you can you can do your still typing kind of concept, which is cool because it allows me to kind of have the best of both worlds. Okay. Is that good for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and hit the escape key. Let's turn our O snaps on now. So we're going to go here. First of all, we're going to set a few. Let's set the endpoint O snap on. Click on the midpoint O snap. Then click on the um, center O snap. And if you have any more in there, just go ahead and turn them off. And then turn that turn that menu on. So now we don't have to hit the shift key. 
but we have to pay attention to what's happening because it may just snap to what it wants to, okay? So I'm gonna go into the line command now and notice if I touch this line, it automatically says, oh, you want an endpoint? You want another endpoint? You want a center? You want an endpoint? It's doing a lot of my work for me, but it isn't necessarily giving me what I want, okay? But it's quicker in a lot of respects, especially if you've just limited it to like say two or three O snaps, you can really keep track of what's going on. Is everybody getting that to work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a cool tool too, but to, just don't use it too much and don't use too many O snaps running because they will be a problem for you. Okay, I guarantee that, all right? Okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna hit the escape key. We're gonna erase everything and then we're gonna do a couple more drawings real quick, okay? Go ahead and just hit the escape key. Type in E and hit enter and the word all enter and then enter again. So we'll just take everything out. All right? So I'd like you to draw two circles. One kind of big and another one a bit smaller, okay? Is everybody good with that? Yep. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the tangent option. This is a really cool. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna to go to the line command. We're gonna hit shift, right click, and go to tangent. Select the big circle. Now what's really cool, notice if you pull this line out here, how it follows you around. Do you notice how it follows you tangent wherever you're looking? Does everybody see that? Yeah. Hit shift, right click again, and let's go to tangent again, and select the second circle. And you've now generated, go ahead and hit enter, you've now generated a line that's perfectly tangent to this circle and perfectly tangent to that circle. Did that work for everybody? Yes. Okay, let's do the same thing on the bottom. Line, shift, right click, tangent. Shift, right click, tangent. And then hit enter. Is that working? Yeah. Yep. All right, so now watch this. We're going to put another circle out here, but we're going to put that circle where these two lines intersect, except they don't really intersect yet, do they? Not math, not physically, right? Right. But they do mathematically. So you might want to zoom out just a little bit so you can see this space over here. All right, everybody ready? So we're gonna go into the circle command and it's gonna ask me to specify a center point. Hit shift, right click, intersection. Select the first line and it'll say, oh, I need another line. So come down here and hit the second line. Notice when I touch that second line, I get a green X out there. When you left click that second line, that's where the circle's gonna be. The center of this circle is at the intersection of these two lines. That just did a whole lot of work for you uh, very quickly. Has everybody seen how this is working? Somebody need me to do that again? Yeah, can you do that one more time? Absolutely, I'm gonna erase my circle, okay? And I'm gonna go into a circle command and it says specify center point. So I'm gonna say, well, I want it out here at the intersection of those two lines. So I'm gonna use an O snap, shift, right click, intersection. Okay. Select the first line, select the second line. When I select that second line or just select, touch it, notice I get that, that green X. Oh, yeah. That's my intersection point, so left click. 
And then it says, okay, show me the size of the circle and there it is. So this circle center is if I extended these two lines, I'm gonna show you something, I'm gonna extend those real quick. Notice how those two lines go right to where that was? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so they actually were there even though mathematically all we were doing was finding it. Okay, did that work for everybody now? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at perpendicular because this is a good one too. Let's say we wanna draw a line perpendicular to this line, okay? So we wanna draw a line out here and just bring it in perpendicular. So I can say line, pick a point out here, and I don't know what the angle would be to make it perpendicular. And obviously uh, intersection or midpoint may not be it. So I'm gonna hit a shift, right click, perpendicular, and you can just select that. That line is now perpendicular to the other line. So that's a really powerful also little routine. Okay. That's what you call perpendicular to. You're perpendicular to an object. Okay. I can also be perpendicular from, if I go to the line, hit shift, perpendicular, select that line. Notice what it's doing is it's allowing me to draw that line anywhere I want, but it's perpendicular. So those are really, really cool tools. How are we doing with these? Good. They are gonna be uh, your best friend, okay? So the process of selecting objects and utilizing those snaps become very, very important as we get up into these modify commands, okay? And if you're still struggling with this, remember I'm gonna record, I'm recording this and I will have this available. I'll get it formatted tonight. Hopefully I'll get it up there tonight even so that you can relook at that. Or you can also contact me for questions, okay? Are yeah. we good? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to begin to look at modify commands then tonight. That's really our focus, and we're going to do several. I'm going to do the erase command with you, and then its counterpart is called the oops command. And you won't even actually find that on a menu anymore. It's one of them, the, the kind of an older style command, but what it'll do is basically undo an, an erase for you. And then we're gonna do the undo redo commands and then move and copy and then ultimately offset and fill it. And by those group of commands tonight, you're gonna to have a lot of uh, power in AutoCAD. And again, it's gonna take a lot of this stuff away from you that we were doing like in the first week and the second week, okay? In fact, I would dare say if you try, after tonight, you tried redrawing assignment one utilizing the commands we're using tonight, you can probably whip that thing out in about five minutes. <laughs> um, so yeah, it'll make a big difference. But remember, we're trying to build a lot of skills. So that's why we're doing things differently, okay? So yeah. erase command really does exactly what it says. It's just going to delete objects from the drawing. Now, here's the thing to understand. They're not ever completely mm -hmm. out of your drawing until you save this drawing and close it. So you can bring them back at some point but once you've done a save and close, uh, then they're history, okay? So you always gotta remember, be, be careful when you do an erase because once you uh, do that, it can be gone forever. Um, you can use the erase command here, or if you like typing, you can type in its alias, which is just the letter E, or you can use the delete key on the keyboard as long as you selected your objects ahead of time. So um, using a, Noun verb selection with the delete key is nice. Okay, so we're going to use the we're going to go into the erase command. Erase. Notice it asks me to select objects, and again I can just pick what I want. Erase is kind of cool because it shows you it kind of highlights it, and it shows you with a red X. Those are the things it's going to take out. When you're done, you just hit enter, and they're gone. Okay, so there's nothing too much to it. I would probably tend to use the erase in a verb noun selection as opposed to noun verb. So here's what I mean by that. If I go out here and I just select this and then I hit the erase key, 
Notice it doesn't ask me any question. It just takes out what I selected. So if you're okay with that, that's fine, but just really, really be careful, okay? Is everybody okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Pretty straightforward command. So now we have this command called oops. And oops, like I said, it's an older style command. You probably can't even find it on the keyboard or on the menu anymore. So what we're gonna do is just type in the word oops, O-O-P-S, and hit enter. And you should notice it brought back your objects. Now notice on my screen, did it bring all of my objects back? No. Nope. Just the last bit that you had deleted. Exactly, because that was done on two different erase operations. Here's the thing about oops, you can only use it once and it will only undo the most recent erase. So if I type in oops again, it's not gonna do anything, okay? So you have a one-shot time of bringing objects back using the oops command, okay? So use it judiciously because um, you get that one shot. Now, if I do another erase, I'll have another oops available, okay? So every time I do an erase, oops will be available. Does anybody know another way you could bring objects back? The undo. undo. The undo, all right. So yeah, you can think of oops as an undo for an erase only. But the thing with undo is it can do some other things you gotta be aware of. So, but you can use this little arrow up here, which is so an undo. I was about to say. Yeah, so if you click on that, you have to notice I have to click on it maybe a couple of times before it'll actually bring them back. Because what it's actually doing on my case, it was undoing my zooms as well, okay? You gotta be careful using zoom, uh, undo with with the erases because you have to sometimes you'll delete other objects or do other things that you don't want to do with it okay kind of get the idea yeah yeah okay if you um if you inadvertently erase something and you recognize it right away mm -hmm. your undo is probably your quickest way to bring it back okay but if you don't recognize it until later down the road you probably want to do an oops because that'll bring it back without taking other things out. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Yep. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Again, one thing I would emphasize, I would probably not use the erase command in noun verb selection. Um, I would tend to use verb noun selection, so that way I select it and it says yes, definitely select objects. Then you have more control, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the undo and the redo command. Um, they're just inverses of each other. Uh, undo basically steps back through a set of instructions. So here's what's happening. In AutoCAD, every time you're doing something, it's like you're giving it a set of instructions. If you take this little arrow here, that's one undo. So that's undo one step back. There's a little arrow right next to it. Go ahead and click on that arrow. You'll notice there's the set of instructions. And as I page through this, what I'm doing is undoing those one step at a time, but right now it's actually going like 20. So if I click down there, I just undone a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, does everybody see the difference? Yeah. So this guy's undo one step at a time, where this guy's undo multiple steps so you, so you got to be careful notice at the bottom is a 23 commands you could have the potential to actually undo your whole drawing okay redo works in reverse order redo just will undo and undo but you will get to a point where undo or redo won't work and at one time in autocad there was no way to um undo a bunch of or redo a bunch of times you only had one redo in autocad at one time but now they've got multiple redos. Notice I, I did a redo on everything and that guy grayed out, so there's nothing more to redo, okay? Is everybody seeing the, how those work? Yeah. Yes. If you're gonna use undo, I would probably do it one click at a time, okay? Because again, you wanna be really, really careful how you're doing it because you can undo potentially your whole drawing, okay? So you can also type in the letter U and then just hit enter. So you can type in U and hit enter, U and hit enter. 
that is taking you out one step at a time, okay, as well. So if this is convenient, use that arrow. If the U and enter is convenient, use that as well, okay? Now, you can also get into the undo command. So if we type in the word undo and hit enter, notice we have what are called sub options there at the bottom. And you see, enter the number of operations or auto, control, begin, end, mark, back. Notice, does anybody know what the default setting on this command is? One operation. One operation, that's correct. So if I just hit enter, it went back one operation. Now let's say if you went, if you typed in 20, it would take you back 20 operations. What about back? Does anybody know what that'll do? Well, let's click on it. And it says, um, hey, you are about to undo everything. Is this okay? What I'm doing is basically deleting my whole drawing. So if I hit enter, it took out everything, okay? Um, the good news is, is that if you opened this drawing, let's say you worked on a lab last week and you open it up this week and you do an undo back, it cannot delete anything that was not done in this session, okay? But you can undo your entire session that you were working in. So if you worked in this drawing for eight hours, you could undo that eight hours in a second, okay? Everybody see how that's working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, be careful with it. I definitely suggest probably kind of doing it one step at a time. I either use that arrow, click it once, or type in U and hit enter. Okay. And that's probably the best bet of, of how to do any of those. Okay. All right. So notice that undo redo is one of those groups of commands. It's an it's a modify type command, but you really don't select anything. So the ones that we're gonna be talking about now, we're gonna look at move, copy, offset, and fill it. These are what I call my working commands. I, I literally use these every time I work in AutoCAD, and they give me, um, so they're, they're so powerful, okay? They're so powerful in what they're gonna do. So the first command we're gonna look at is what we call the move command, okay? So we find the move command under the modify panel, of the home tab. Up here, it's over in this corner, and you can see it's pretty prominent, so it's, it kind of tells you that, yeah, this is one that you use a lot. So that's why you see it there. Also, if you like alias commands and typing, which I do, you can just type in the letter M and hit enter, and it'll also generate the move command for you. Okay, so you can pick it up here, or you can just type in M and hit enter. So here's a couple things. I want to show you something. Don't do anything yet, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna draw a line here. And I want you to notice how that line is drawn. It's drawn at an angle. Everybody see that? Right? Yep. yep. Okay, so I'm gonna move this and I don't don't do this anything with that. Just 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 watch what I'm doing here. Notice how I'm moving this. What do you notice about this line as it's moving? Stays at the angle. It stays at the same angle, right? And that process is called translating this object, okay? So when you are moving an object without rotating it, you are translating it. So literally all you're doing is taking a certain amount of delta X and a certain amount of delta Y and you're just adding it to each respective piece. And when you click that second point, it just translates it over, up, whatever you're doing, okay? Does everybody see that? So yeah. we're gonna talk about another command in a couple of weeks called rotate. And I'll talk about another one called align. And they kind of look like they're moving things, but they do it differently. So we are doing a translation and a rotation is separate. And when you do a move and a, and a rotate together, you're doing what's called a transformation. And we'll talk about those in, like I said, in a couple of weeks, okay? So here's what I'd like you to do for me. Go ahead and draw a line like I have, just at a diagonal like this, okay? And I'd like you to take and draw a circle somewhere over on the other corner like that. All right, so we have two objects there. And we are going to take that line 
and we're going to move it into the center of that circle, okay? And then we're gonna take and move them together in the other direction. So we're gonna go into the move command. Is everybody with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we are going to move the line into the circle. So first off, if the circle is going to stay fixed, we're not going to select it. We're only going to select the line. So in this case, I'm going to select the line. Once I highlight it, it says select objects. Well, it, it thinks I'm still interested in selecting objects and I'm not interested in that. So I'm just going to hit enter. And that tells it I'm done with my selection. Okay, is that good? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now then, here's another important aspect about move. You have two ways of moving. You can either move it from what's called a base point to a secondary point or a displacement point, or if you know what the delta x, delta y value is, you can displace it. So you either use base point to displacement point, or you use displacement, okay? Probably 90% of the time, maybe 80% of the time, you're going to give it a base point and then a displacement point. You don't normally use a displacement because you just don't know that as much, okay? So what we're gonna use is a base point. And what I want the base point to be is the middle of this line. Now the base point could literally be anywhere. It could be the end point, it could be the midpoint, it could actually be a point out here. It doesn't have to be on that object. But in this case, I want it on the object. So I'm gonna do a shift, right click, and hit mid. And then I'm gonna select the line. And notice now it's kind of picking that up with a handle. Is that working for everybody? Yeah. What are we picking again? A shift, I'm picking right click, the mid. I'm doing a shift, right click, and I'm grabbing midpoint, because I okay. wanna pick that line up by its midpoint. Did that work? Yeah. Thank okay. You. So notice you're in a translation mode right now. So now it wants to know the second point. So you were gonna hit shift, right click, center, come and touch your circle. And you should see that your line is sitting right in the middle of that circle. It's going through its center point and the midpoint of the line and the center of the circle coincide. Okay. Did everybody get that to work? Does anybody need to yeah. see that again? Do that just one more time. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna undo back. Okay, there's my situation. So I'm gonna go into the move. I'm gonna select the object to move. When I'm done selecting the object to move, I hit enter. I'm gonna specify a base point. So I'm gonna hit a shift, right click, mid, Snap to the midpoint. Notice when you drag it out, it's translating. So I'm gonna hit a shift, right click, center. Select the center. Okay. This is an important thing to know how to do. So we need to make sure, you know, you wanna make sure you're good with this, okay? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. So that was using what was called move base point to a displacement point. So I'm gonna contrast that and show you, well, we could displace this if we knew how much we needed to move this in X and how much we needed to move it in Y. And again, like I said, you don't usually know that, okay? Most of the time, it's gonna be more convenient to base point it. So we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna go into the move command this time I want you to select both objects. So the easiest way to do that would probably be with a uh, crossing, but you can use a pick box, you can use all different methods. Once you've selected both objects, go ahead and hit the enter. And it's asking you for a base point or a displacement, okay? So we're just gonna hit enter because we wanna go into a displacement. And we're gonna just type it type in the amount of delta x and delta y we need to do. Now we don't do an at symbol here, that's implied. So let's say I wanna take it from, the, from where it's sitting 
over to the left hand side of the screen and up. So that would be a negative X and a positive Y. So I'm going to enter negative 10 comma 3 and hit enter and it should have gone over 10 and up 3. Mine didn't move very much but it did move. Did you guys all get that to work? Yep. So Craig, can you see how you probably don't use this as much as you use the other option? Yeah, because you would have to know the exact point. Exactly, and, and you know, very often you don't know that. So uh, like I said, you'll probably find that you're gonna use the first way we did it 90%, 95% of the time. And Is it moving the center of the circle that much? It's moving everything. Just think that what it's doing is it took a negative 10 and a positive 3 and it added it to each point. So it added that to this, added it to the center, and it added it to that. Gotcha, gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. So technically any coordinate out there got displaced by negative 10 and positive 3 in the Y. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Okay. And that's, if you didn't do that, it would rotate. Uh, okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, if it didn't do that, it would be rotating. So right. that's how, that's exactly how a translation works. Um, it's adding the same amount of X and Y to each point respectively. Okay. All right, anybody else questions? Nope. Okay, do you notice that this has an X a Y and a Z displacement there. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So that means you can use this point to do 3D moves. So mm -hmm. I could use it in X and a Y and a Z. So if you had a 3D object, you could raise this thing, let's say above the plane, as well as move it X and Y. So move is, it, move is actually a 3D command, okay? Even though we're only using it as a 2D option, okay? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at copy. Copy is really exactly the same thing as move. The only difference is, is that when you do a copy, it leaves the original objects behind and it just places a copy wherever you place it. And it also does a translation. So it works the same way. It'll ask for a base point. It'll ask for a second point. And if you do that, you can do multiple copies. If you do a displacement copy, you only get one shot, okay? So we're gonna go into the copy and notice copy is right below move. And by the way, again, if you like aliasing, and you like to type in commands, you would type in CO because if you type in C, it's gonna bring up the circle command, okay? So we're gonna go into the copy command and we're gonna select both objects, just like that, okay? Once you've got your objects selected, go ahead and hit the Enter key, and notice it looks exactly like the Move command, Base Point Displacement. So if I give it a Base Point, I'm gonna hit the Shift, right click, Center. Notice now I can place a copy over here, 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 and when I'm done, I just hit enter. So my original objects, that's my original object set. These are all copies, okay? And notice they are definitely translating, okay? Mm -hmm. and, uh, so again, from that standpoint, it is just like the move command, okay? Any questions? No. So here's something to think about now. Since we've introduced the uh, copy command, one of the things they always say in AutoCAD, if you're drawing anything twice the same, you're doing it wrong. So what they're implying is that, you know, you draw something once and then you can copy it multiple times because notice how big a time saver this is to just draw this thing once and copy it where you need it, okay? So you're gonna be utilizing copy and move quite a bit throughout uh, your career if you stay in CAD and work at and um, it's very very important okay any questions 
No. All right, let's try one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and delete some of those cop. Actually, we could just do an undo and it should take all of those out because those were all done in the same command. It undid the whole command, okay? So I'm gonna show you the difference when you use the copy displacement, it won't let you do multiple copies, just one, okay? So let's go ahead and we will do copy, select your objects, hit enter. This time we're gonna use displacement, just hit enter and just tell it how much we want to go in terms of x and y. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to tell it negative 20 in the x, comma 5 in the y. So notice that it did give me a copy, but it's not letting me do it multiple times. And again, like we said with the move, you're very unlikely to know those exact distances. Okay. So, uh, I mean, you might, and then again, if that's the case, then you could use it. Otherwise, you're probably going to use a base point displacement. Okay. How are we doing? All right. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a look at two more commands uh, tonight. And these are really, really powerful, both of these. And in conjunction with the move copy, and then what we're going to get into here, uh, you're going to have a lot more that you can deal with. And then I'll get you started. I'll, I'll show you how to work on this, this third assignment. We'll go through that. So um, so let's go ahead. We'll, we'll clean the screen up. Let's just go ahead and do an erase. So I'm just going to do an erase. All enter twice. Okay. So we're going to take a look at a command called fillet. And you'll notice fillet is right here. In fact, underneath fillet, there's a couple other commands too. One called chamfer. So chamfer is somewhat similar to fillet. And then they have this other one that's called blend curves. Okay, but fillet is going to be the one we're going to take a look at tonight. So a fillet is a way of taking objects that are intersecting, such as, for instance, these two lines and rounding them with a corner. I'm just going to do this real quick and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to do this. So I'm, I can round them with a corner by just selecting the object, selecting the other object and notice it puts that nice arc in there. And the beauty of this is this arc is tangent to this object and tangent to this object. And you might remember me the first week saying, well, you know, there's going to be a lot better way of doing an arc. And this is the command. It really pretty much negates the whole arc concept. Okay. So this will, this will make this a lot simpler. Um, so it notice it took those lines, it trimmed them, and it also put an arc in there for me. Okay. So that's what I fill. This is what we call a fillet right there. That would be your fillet arc. And all you have to do is basically select the objects and provide a radius for it to fill it with, okay? So here's what I would like you to do as we go through this. I'm gonna show you, it has, quite, it has quite a few options. So I'm gonna have you guys draw some lines for me. So what I'd like you to do is draw a line, bring that line up and then bring him over like this. Okay. And just do another line cross it through like that. Okay. That's what we're going to play with with the fillets. All right, is everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when we go into the fillet command, and by the way, this is um, another nice alias to know, because I use, I, I use fillet literally, I mean, all the time. But if it's, if you just type in the F, key and hit enter, it'll generate the fillet command for you. So or we can just click it here, fillet. So I want you to notice right now, there's a couple of things it's telling you. Mine tells me I have a current setting of mode is equal to trim. Is everybody showing that? Mm -hmm. And it'll also show you your current radius setting. Now mine happens to be zero. So you wanna kind of be aware of those two things because those are telling you something about how fillet's gonna execute. 
And also then down here you have sub options, undo, polyline, radius, trim, and multiple, okay? So the first thing you have to do right now, because the radius is set to zero, does anybody tell me what that means? It's just a point? Yeah, basically it means you're not gonna get an arc. Now, the cool thing about having a fillet radius of zero is means you can, add, you can make this do a trim or an extend for you. So I'm gonna show you how that works because that's really, really pretty neat. But what we wanna do is perform a fillet first. So we're gonna go into the radius option and we're gonna choose a radius value. Don't make it too big, it may not fit. I'm gonna make mine one unit and hit enter. So if I come up here now and it says select the first object, I'm gonna pick that object first and then come over here and touch this object. And what's kind of neat about this now, when you touch the object, it shows you how it's going to fill it but it won't actually fill it until you left click. So it kind of, be, before you commit, it shows you if you're getting the right fill it or you're selecting the right object. So if I like what I see, I now just left click and notice it trimmed that corner sharp and it added that nice tangent arc for me. Is that working for everybody? Yeah. And that yeah. is doing that, um, what that's doing then is also dropping me out of the command. Okay, so it'll execute the fillet and then it's done, All right? That right there is extremely powerful, okay? So let's take a look at another, uh, another doing, we'll do this again. So fillet, it will remember the last radius that you used. So if I go to this one, I don't have to tell it a radius as long as I wanna use one. I just come down here and I touch this object. Now watch what happens. If I come over here, Notice where it would put that fillet radius. But if I come over here, it would put it in a different location. So before I actually commit, I can see the one I want and then I would click on it, okay? I'm gonna have you just bail out of this one. So just go ahead and hit the escape key. Did everybody see what I was talking about there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, so let's show you how we can use this as a trim. Actually, I want you to do one more thing for me too. Go ahead and we'll do another line here. Uh, just drink, we're drawing up like that, but don't touch that line, okay? All right. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna go into the fillet command, and this time we're gonna set the radius equal to zero. What we're telling it is we don't want an arc, but we want it to perform a trim or an extend for me, okay? So let's come over here and touch this line first. And again, if you wanna see what it's gonna do, if I come over here, it's gonna trim that. Notice what you select is what it's going to keep. If I come over here and select that, it'll trim these two guys off. So let's go ahead and we'll select that. And notice it did a really nice trim for me. Okay, mm -hmm. is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Now I wanna warn you something. Uh, let's go back into the fillet command. Notice it says 0 0.0000, right? Is it possible that you could have an arc in there and not know it? Possibly. You possibly could. Why, how would that be? Anybody know? It only shows us like a few places past the decimal point unless we specify, right? Exactly. So if I had point zero 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 one in there, I wouldn't see that because my units is only set to four. But guess what's going to happen every time you do a fillet? You're going to get this teeny tiny little arc in there. And I'm telling you that because I've had that happen where I didn't realize that I had a small incremental value of radius in there. And all of a sudden I'm doing other things and it's like, hey, this isn't working right. And then when I zoomed up, I don't have, I didn't have my arcs in there. So, or I did have arcs, excuse me. Okay. All right, so if you place a zero in there though, typically you're good. So just always, always be aware of that, okay? Mm -hmm. right, so this time we use this one as a trim, right? This one, watch, well, this one will extend, watch this. Actually, it's gonna do both things. 
if I click on this guy and touch that, notice it's going to extend the lower one and trim the upper one. So when I do that, I've got that. Okay, is everybody getting that to work? Mine's yeah. not extending, that it's I can tell. Extending. No. Um, did it trim for you? It it'll trim. It just the line didn't extend. Hmm. Uh, what what's your mode setting set to you down here? Does it say trim? Uh, let me see. Can you see that? Yeah. And it there. says mode mode is equal to trim. Let me see. Or maybe it says temp. Trim. No Tim. Tim. The last thing. Hmm. Oh, I'll tell you what. Go ahead and just hit the fill it command. Can you see it now? Mode is equal to whatever. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why yours is. Did you? Okay. Did you have it drawn like mine? Oh, wait, you had now the, it is. Now okay. it is. I just had to click it again. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I was going to say it should have. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's do something here. I want to show you what that trim mode does to you. Okay. So if you turn trim mode off, it won't trim. Okay. So in that case, then it won't extend or trim for you, but it also won't trim out if you're putting a fillet radius in there. So let's go back up in the fillet and go to the trim option here. And notice it says trim or no trim, and you guys should be trimmed by default. Is that true for everybody? Yeah. Yes. Okay, set, set it to no trim. And then I want you to go into the radius and put a one inch radius in there. Mm -hmm. And come to one of these that has a sharp corner and click on the first line, click on the second line. And you'll notice that when it puts the arc in there, it doesn't trim out the two pieces. Is everybody getting that to work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing to be really, really aware of with that little guy. That's called a trim mode. And if that trim mode gets turned off, like we have it off now, it stays off forever, okay? So that means every time you're using the fillet command is never trimming up here and you're getting all frustrated. Why is that trimming? Why isn't that trimming? And the reason is, is because we turned that little switch off. So I would say under normal operations, and again, probably 95% of the time, you want trim mode turned on, okay? So we're gonna go fix that right now so that we don't have this problem because if you start working tonight or tomorrow or whatever and it doesn't work, it's probably that. So we're gonna go back up to fill it. We're gonna go into the trim and we're gonna set that back to a trim mode, okay? And then you can just hit enter if you want. Okay, so it, it again, that's like a little switch. It's a little toggle if you wanna think of it that way that will take care of that for you like that, all right? Everybody okay with that? Yep. All right, yeah. so let's uh, take a look at there. You, you might've noticed there was a polyline option. Did anybody notice that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what that does. So if I take a polyline, Let's just take a polyline and draw it across my, my one line and then bring it up here. Just make some jaggedy vertexes on it like that. And then go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go into the fillet command. Make sure your trim mode is turned on. It should say trim mode or mode is equal to trim, and make sure your radius is equal to one. If your radius is not equal to one, go ahead and do radius and then just set it to one, okay? Did we good? Yeah. Right. Go ahead and select this line first, and then this P line. Okay, did that work for you? Mm-hmm. All right, now click on your P line, and what do you notice? Anybody notice anything? 
there's like a rectangle on the um little arc where we connect them well also if you notice this line highlighted and that arc highlighted as well as the poly line so what this did is it actually when it filleted this line to this p line it actually converted that line into a poly line does everybody get what i'm saying yeah. Mine won't let me select that first line. It only lets me select the poly line. So when, it, in other words, so when you're picking this like this, it, it won't let you do it? Well, so I had the original where it was intersecting. Yeah, like this. Yeah, okay, yeah. And, and then... You, so click on this for me and make sure that's just a separate line, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's separate. And this one's a P line, right? Yep. Okay. And you're saying that when you fill it in, it didn't work. Oh, wait, no, now it does. It does? Sorry. Okay. I see. Click on it, Craig, I, I think and make I sure that you'll see what I'm saying is if you fill it in properly, this should be now yep. a, all part of that polyline. It joined them, in other words. Yep, that works. Okay, I think so I hit polyline. And oh, okay. That's well, I didn't do the polyline option. I just wanted to show you what would happen if you fill it at a non-polyline to a polyline. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. So now we're going to look at what the polyline option will do. Gotcha. If you go into the fillet, P for polyline, and you select your polyline, can anybody see what that did? Yeah, it converted that last line. Well. Actually, what it should have done was fill it at every vertex for you. So notice that's a fillet, 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 fillet. Oh, yeah. So it took every sharp corner that was existing in that polyline and it did a fillet of one inch on it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the reality of that, how useful that is, I'm going to say it's not highly useful, but um, it's possible that, you know, you might use it. I, I don't use it that much, but uh, it's something just to keep in mind. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things about poly polylines are somewhat tricky. Used to be at one time in AutoCAD, they didn't like to fill it very well to especially non polylines, but they've really cleaned that up in AutoCAD, so that's usually not an issue. But if this is a 3D polyline, it will not fill it. Okay and it would give you an error message. So this has to be a 2D polyline, which this command right here, that's a, that's a 2D polyline, okay? The other thing that can make a object not fill it, let me just, I'm gonna draw something here. Let me just draw something real quick. I'm gonna take that line, and I'm gonna take another line, and I'm gonna move this line All right, does anybody know what I just did? I moved this line and I displaced it zero, zero, one. Anybody know what I did? Put it on the Z axis. Yeah, I actually. So it's now three dimensional. It's, it is, it's actually sitting above it by one inch. Yeah. So if I, um, <laughs> Let me show you. You see how that line's sitting above it? Yeah. Okay, so watch what'll happen now because the thing is about when you're using a fillet, it has to be coplanar. So that means these objects have to lie in the same plane. So when I try to fillet these two guys, watch what'll happen. It balked. And it gave me a little error message that said, well, the second object, uh, is lines are non-coplanar. So if, if you get that message, that means something's like out of whack in 3D world, okay? So what do you see how that? You probably will not encounter that, but if you work in AutoCAD long enough, you're gonna encounter it, I can guarantee it, okay? Any questions? No. Okay, this command is like really, I can't emphasize enough how important it is because it will actually um, 
it actually does a fillet, it does a trim, and it does an extend, okay? So it does all, it really is the best of three commands in one, okay? All right, we're good? Yeah. Okay, perfect. We're gonna do one more command. I'm gonna do the offset command now. And then we're gonna take a look at that third um, assignment, okay? And I'll go over that with you. So let's go ahead, um, I'm gonna just clean all my screen up and get rid of my mess. So let's just go ahead, we're gonna go into the erase command and we're just gonna type in all and hit enter, okay? Oh, let me, uh, yeah, I'll show you something here. I'm gonna come back to the fillet here in a minute. So um, the offset command is really awesome. It will take uh, an object and it'll, it'll draw a parallel object to that object um, very rapidly. So for instance, if you were drawing like a floor plan or something and you had a bunch of parallel lines, you could start with one line and just offset it across. Or if you're drawing a grid, something like these lines on the grid, you could draw one line and then offset and offset and offset. Um, so it works with lines, it works with arcs, it works with circles, ellipses, so most objects will offset. Um, and by the way, I don't think I mentioned this, but you know, we were drawing, we were drawing lines and filleting them, but you could draw a line in an arc and fillet those two guys together, or you could draw a circle and circle and fillet those two guys together. So fillet doesn't always have to work with lines. So let's go um, to uh, draw some objects and I wanna show you how these work. So what I'd like you to do is we'll draw a line and I'm gonna draw a line like one, two, three, four, like that. And I would like you to draw a polyline for me, just kind of parallel to this. You can make that polyline kind of look just about like that line. We're going to do that for a reason so we can see how these offset. Okay, is everybody good? Yeah. Okay. So offset, again, it's a very useful tool. It's one of those you're going to use a lot. They've got it over here on the extreme right-hand corner at the bottom. And it has an alias of O. So again, good way of getting in that, is just typing in O and hitting enter once you recognize that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and hit the offset command. And we're gonna notice that it has, again, several sub options. Specify distance, through point, erase, and layer. And we're not gonna worry about layer tonight, but I am gonna show you the offset distance and the through point. Um, so the one that you probably use more often is this guy called distance. And so what you're literally doing is telling it what distance you're going this way of that line or say that way of that line. So if I had an eight inch wall, I would just type in eight inches my offset distance and then it's just set at an exact value, okay? Once you um, set a value up for the offset, um, it remembers it. So if you're using that a second time, you can just get back into it and it's gonna have that set up for you, okay? So we're gonna go and let's give it a distance and not, let's don't make it too big. Let's make it maybe 0.5. Okay, I'm gonna hit 0.5 and enter. So then it says, okay, select the object. So you select the object and then you show it which side. So you just come over to the side. Don't worry about how far because it knows exactly how far. So you just click a point, come to the next object, click a point, come to the next object and click a point, and then get go ahead and hit enter when you're done. Okay, is that working for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. And that's really all there is to offset, but what do you notice about this offset? Hmm. It hasn't, doesn't link the lines. Exactly, because what it, what it, uh, what essentially it does is it just copies this line over that distance, see? So the endpoints are the same. So how would we clean this up? The fillet? Yeah, so we could go into fillet, 
we could go to radius, set that radius equal to zero. And what I would also want to do, because I want to do this multiple times, I would say multiple. So I'd say multiple and then pick and pick and pick and pick. Okay. So that's not too terribly bad, right? Worked pretty well. But it required me to use two separate commands, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so watch what the difference will be with this polyline. So we're gonna go back into the offset command. Notice the distance is the same. So just go ahead and hit enter to accept it. Select your polyline and show it the side. And notice what's nice about the polyline is it does all that work for you. So there's a distinct advantage to using a polyline object as opposed to, let's say, the three or four lines, because then I had to come back and follow that up with a trim. Okay. Now, work for everybody? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so one thing to understand with the offset, that distance you're applying there is called a perpendicular distance. So if I measure the distance from that line to that line perpendicularly, that's the distance I'm using. Okay, so let's draw an arc. Don't worry about its size, just draw it, generate it off to the side. Okay, so when you offset an arc, you can use the same distance. We don't really talk about it being parallel, but if I select this arc, notice it'll bring it out, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Those arcs aren't truly what we call parallel. There's another term that are used, that's used for that. Does anybody know the term that you would use for that? These arcs are called concentric arcs. Can anybody tell me what that means? It's the... What was that, Josh? It's the same thing as parallel. It just means they curve together and never cross. Yeah, but here's the, here's the main thing of this, is that if you click on this, notice where the center point is. Center point, center point, center point. Concentrics all have the same center point, okay? So, um, yeah, you're, you're right, basically. They don't, they're never gonna touch. And, but all you're actually doing with a concentric arc is you're either adding a distance to the radius or subtracting a distance from the radius. That's what the offset's doing, okay? So mm -hmm. circles, circles will con uh, create concentric objects. Uh, arcs will con create concentric objects when you offset. So will ellipses, okay? But this is gonna always give you a perpendicular distance. Perpendicular, okay? Any questions? All right, let's take a look at uh, what we call the through point. So normally when you're using offset, you know how long your um, distance is, okay? But there are times when you don't know how big your distance is. So here's what I'd kind of like you to do. Come up to your polyline that we did and draw me a circle to somewhere out near it like that. So let's say hypothetically, we want to offset this polyline so that the polyline offset is going to be the distance from that polyline to the center of that circle. But I don't know what that distance is, but I know that I want that distance to be exactly through the center of that circle. Okay, So I can have AutoCAD calculate that distance for me by using what's called a through point option. So if I click offset and I go to the through point, now you just pick the object you want to go through or the object you want to offset. And notice now it kind of drags out with your cursor. So when you get that look, you would hit a shift, right click, grab your O snap center. And what that did was calculated that exact distance for me to offset. And so that's also a really good, nice little powerful command. Um, you're probably not going to use through point 
as readily as you will um, offset distance. Okay. But again, it's it's useful, and I, I do use it. I do use it on occasions, so um, it is definitely useful. Okay, did everybody get that one to work? Yeah. Anybody need to see any of the, those things again? No. Okay, I want to show you something. But let's go back up to fill it, and then we're going to take a look at this sec, uh, third com, uh, project that we're going to get into. So if you have truly parallel lines here, I mean, technically you can't fill it because essentially, um, you know, we're usually thinking that we're putting those tangent arcs in because I don't necessarily know what that radius is, okay? So if we go to fill it though, it's kind of neat. It'll, it'll figure out the radius for you. So it doesn't matter what the radius is here. All you have to do is pick the first object, pick the second object, and notice it'll end cap it with a fillet. And if I come over to here, do the same thing. Come over here, do the same thing. Nope, didn't like that because that's a polyline kind of option. So there's a case where polylines don't like each other too much. But in this case, it did a nice end cap for me. Okay, you guys getting that to work? Yep. Let's see if I, I want to see if it should do it with these arcs here. Nope, doesn't like that either. So there are times it is not going to do that for you. But uh, most of the time it, it works pretty well. Okay, any questions then on any of these? Uh, particularly move and copy, erase, uh, fillets and offsets, because we're going to be utilizing those on this next assignment. Everybody okay? Yep. I'm good. Okay, great. All right, so I'm gonna go, let's go ahead and we'll just erase everything. So I did uh, put out the uh, assignment for you earlier in the day. If you had a chance to uh, print that out, you can pull that out. Um, if not, you can open up your Blackboard. What we're looking at is this guy here. And we're gonna generate a map, um, which, uh, Again, since a lot of this is mapping and the stuff you're gonna see in GIS, this is gonna be a different type of map. Uh, we're gonna use what's called a surveyor's type of unit. Now we are gonna deal with some coordinates today, but you'll also have the ability to use uh, things like the offset and the fillet command, and that's gonna make your work a lot easier. So um, let's take a look at the, let's scroll down here. Your picture will basically look like this. Um, you're going to have a title block, a border, you're going to have this little north arrow here. We're going to draw this, this property line that comes around like this and it comes back and we're going to have these, this arc in here and then ultimately we're going to put this building in here. This is called a building footprint. Now notice that building has specs on it. Uh, one thing is that you're going to be 30 feet off of this line. So this line is gonna be parallel um, to this line, 30 feet. So this is where your offset will come in. And we're gonna to have to figure out coming from that point over to get to that exact corner so that when we can zip around this thing, we'll make sure that everything's right. So let's go back and take a look at the beginning of this. So we're going to be utilizing the line command. You can potentially use the p-line command, which is probably a good command to use for the building footprint. Uh, arc, rectangles, and offset and fill it. Now, the one thing I'm going to need to explain to you is these guys called surveyors units tonight, because that's something completely different for most of you. Um, and it's basically an angle type. So notice down here, we're going to be utilizing the architectural unit, which you should be aware of but the angle type is gonna be what we call a surveyor's unit. So let me, I'm gonna come over here and kind of look at this. Um, a surveyor's unit is actually, the terminology we use is what we call a bearing. And if any of you are used to like map and compass kind of work or anything like that, if you think that you have a line, if this is a line and I'm going straight up, 
that would be in my north direction, okay? And if I draw a line this way, that would be in my east direction. So the way this works in the surveying world, if I draw a diagonal line, let's say coming out of this, oops, like that, right? Normally we know that in AutoCAD and in math, the angle on this line is measured off of this axis. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and that's the x-axis, okay? Now we're gonna actually call that the east axis, and this is the north axis or y. Well, the one thing they do in land descriptions, mapping, instead of using this angle here, they use this angle here, okay? So we were talking about this angle right here. And north is always zero direction. And therefore, east is going to be 90 degrees. And then when you jump down into this area here, which would be going south like that, south is also zero. So we measure from south to east, zero to 90, or south north to east, zero to 90. So with a bearing, you can have an angle anywhere between zero and 90, but you can't have anything greater than 90. Okay, is everybody with me? Yeah. Now, yeah. if I extended this line in that direction, okay, what I have is this area, which is called northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. So here's what's happening theoretically. Zero to 90, zero to 90, zero to 90, and zero to 90, those are going to be allowing you to have that four times. So if this angle right here was 70 degrees, you can have 70 degrees here, 70 here, 70 here, or 70 here. So in order to qualify that, you use what are called quadrants. So this is called your northeast quadrant, southeast quadrant, southwest, and northwest. If we go back and look at that paperwork here, notice, first of all, notice where north is. It's up on this paper. There's this guy called a bearing. Does everybody see that? And yeah. notice it says that it's traveling northwest at three degrees, 37 minutes, and 18 seconds. Okay. So if you compare that line to this north line, you'll see it's kind of shooting over in this direction. So that's literally three degrees, 37 minutes, and 18 seconds off of north going that way. Okay, does everybody see how that works? Yeah. So all of these are kind of referenced with this thing called a bearing and a distance. Okay, so what we got is a vector, bearing and a distance, bearing and a distance, bearing and a distance, all right? Yeah. Um, so the only thing we have to really worry about is this is going to be a polar coordinate type of input. And since we're using degrees, minutes, seconds, I'm going to have to show you how to use that and how we would type this in. So I'm going to, I'm writing down something and then we'll, we'll take a look at this. Okay. So we're going to go into this and we're going to set up our units to architectural and then we're going to use a surveyor's unit. Okay. And this other thing that's very important is we're going to set the base angle to south. Now, the reason you're going to do that is right now, when we use a system, AutoCAD thinks that north is straight up, okay? And what I'm doing by turning it to south, it's rotating at 90. So when I do that, it's going to think that this is the north direction. This is east, this is south, and this is west, okay? So that's important that we set this up here, okay? So let's go, we'll go do this real quick. I'm gonna just erase what I've got here. And we're gonna go into the units. So if you just type in units, notice if you haven't changed anything, you should be in a decimal unit in both um, degrees and, and uh, length. So we're gonna set the length to architectural puts us in a foot and inch system, okay? And we're gonna go to the angle type and set that to a surveyor's unit. 
and notice it's now in a degree minute second format. Zero degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds, okay? To change your direction, you go to the direction button here and notice it says your base angle is east, which basically says that that's X. We're gonna flip that to south. So what that's doing is rotates that. Pick okay and okay that. You don't see any difference on the screen. This didn't rotate over here, nor did the X and the Y, but it now thinks that this is the north direction, okay? And that's only important when we're talking about the bearings. If you're using delta X or any of that kind of stuff, delta Y, it still you type it in like you normally do. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to this uh, thing here. So we're going to use a limit setting of zero, zero, up to an upper right corner of 3636 comma 2790, okay? So here's what's happening again. Um, we're drawing this thing full scale. This, this piece of property is like 200 some odd feet long this way by 100 some odd feet long this way. So we have to make this piece of paper bigger than the piece of property and that's what the limits are gonna do for us, okay? So we're gonna go in and set the limits. Set your limits. Mm -hmm. Put your lower left corner limits to zero comma zero. They're probably already set to that, but if you want to just reset them, go ahead and set, type in zero, zero and hit enter. And the upper right value is 3636 comma 2790. And that's actually in inches, but it'll convert it to feet. So once you type in that, you hit enter. And then we have to do that zoom all to force that in. Okay. Is that good for everybody? Could you uh, repeat those numbers again, please? Yeah. Sure, they're, um, they're on your sheet, but the numbers were 36, 36, well, zero, zero for the lower left. Okay. Yeah. And the upper right is 36, 36, comma, 2790. Okay. Now, if you go back into your limits, you'll notice that the limits are reading out in feet and inches. You'll notice my lower left are at zero, zero. Notice my upper right is at 300 feet and 232 feet. And that's again because we're drawing this building full scale and it's converting everything over into architectural units. Okay, that's why it's doing it that way. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yep. All right, so I'm not gonna draw the whole thing for you, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, let's go ahead and put the rectangle in first because that's our border. So go into your rectangle, place your rectangle at zero, zero, and then 36, 36, comma, 27, 90. And that should be, you should be seeing the entire rectangle right now. Is that, is that good for everybody? Yep. All right, let's go back to the paper here. So we've set up the units, we set up the limits, we did our regen, and we just did the, the border. And then you, the next thing I would probably do, even though it doesn't say here, I would, oh yeah, it does. Go ahead and complete your title block area. So you do have your title block. Notice it's 90 feet by 45 feet. That's not a mistake because remember we're drawing this thing full scale and that's been scaled up to agree with everything here, okay? So you guys should all be able to handle this now pretty easily, right? Any mm -hmm. questions on that? No. Now, keep in mind too, the way my picture's oriented is incorrect. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. So you'll have to turn it what? Uh, to the... Uh, Clockwise. Yeah, 90 degrees, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so mine's just, in, mine's just in a up up mode, so I would just rotate this 90 degrees, okay? So what this says now is draw the boundary using the given bearing and distance information. You need to start the boundary at point A, 
And we're going to use that coordinate value 192, comma, 696. Okay. And what you're going to want to do is start the boundary and then close it with an arc. And it says consider using a start end radius option arc. Okay. So let me show you what we're doing down here in this picture. So here's point A. And we're going to start here at that point, and we're going to generate a line from here to here. Okay. Now this line is the same bearing as this line. That's what we call a radial line. Okay. So these have the same bearing: north, three degrees, thirty-seven, eighteen. Does everybody see that? Yeah. How long yeah. is this line right here? Uh, 40. 40. It's 40, right, because it's a radius. So remember, any point from the center of that arc is going to have the same distance. So we're going to draw this as a line first, and then we're going to do this as a second line, because when we get done, we're going to want to erase this line out, okay? We're going to get rid of this line. We're actually just going to start here. So this, this is important. You might want to make a note on this. This 227.28 is not from the center, it's from the edge, okay? So from that point right there, you're out 227 feet. And this distance here, 136.04, is from that point back to the arc. It's not going to the center, okay? Is everybody with me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at point A, draw a line 40 feet, and then I'm going to show you how you guys can zip around and come up this way, okay? So let's go back to AutoCAD. We're going to go into the line command. We're going to start it at that center point, which we said was 192, 696, and hit enter. And you should notice that that thing is rubber banded just like that. Is that working for everybody? Yeah. Okay, so we need to travel from that point 40 feet at that bearing north, mm -hmm. three degrees, 37 minutes, 18 seconds west. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. This is a polar coordinate. Who can tell me polar coordinate input? Uh, I... What was that, Craig? I didn't catch it. Would it be the at symbol 40? At, yep. At symbol, all right. 40 feet? Yep, 40 feet. And make sure you put the foot mark. If you don't put the foot mark, it's going to go what? 40 inches. 40 inches. And it'll be obvious. It'll be really too small. Okay. So then we're going to use the less than symbol because that's your telling it it's a polar coordinate. Okay. So here's where it's a little tricky. That bearing is north. Three degrees, 37 minutes, 18 seconds west, okay? So what you're going to do then is put in the N. Don't worry about it uppercase or lowercase. That's N for north. Three degrees, three. There is no symbol, degree symbol on the keyboard, so what you use is the D symbol, either D uppercase or lowercase. D for degree, okay? Then we use 37 minutes, which is the same symbol you would use for feet, and 18 seconds, which is the same symbol you would use for inches. And then you're going to type in a W, okay? So notice the at symbol, the full distance, a less than symbol, and then the bearing, okay? North, 3 degrees, 37 minutes, 18 seconds west. Very often people will forget to put in the last W and they'll hit enter and nothing happens. So kind of keep a mind on that. So go, if you hit enter now, you should see that that line went over at that bearing. And you notice it's kind of angled, right? Is that working for everybody? Yep. So yeah. now we need to do the same thing, but we're going to add the distance. We're going to go the distance of 227.28. So this time we would type in at 
two, eight. Again, don't forget the foot mark because you're in feet. Less than north three D. 37 minutes, 18 seconds, and then west ultimately. And again, if you enter that properly, you should see that line zip across and it should take you up to there. How's that working? Yep. Is that good for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna continue that if we go back over here, you're gonna, we're now sitting at that point. I would zip up at that bearing and distance, go this way at that bearing and distance and come back to that bearing and distance. When you get done, you're gonna do an arc, start, center, end, close it out. There's where you wanna use O snaps because you'll have an end point here, an end point here, and an end point here, and then you can delete that line out. Is everybody okay with that? Yep. Yep. All right, great. So let's, uh, let me, I'm gonna go back to AutoCAD here. I'm gonna just hit enter, okay? Just recognize the fact you need to finish this off. Um, so let's look at the building, okay? So we're gonna place this building in here. And here's the dimensions on the building, okay? This corner and this corner are the same things as that corner and that corner respectively, okay? So we have dimensions around this thing. This is what's referred to as a building footprint. You know, we got 56 feet, eight inches. We have 48 feet, eight. So we've got all those around. You do not have to draw this internal structure here, okay? You also don't have to draw the double line. Just You're just drawing the outside line. So the outside line, all these dimensions are going to be to the outside lines. Okay, does everybody follow on that? Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing you got to figure out. How do we get started with this point right here? Okay, so notice this is 30 feet parallel to this line and 50 feet back from here to here. Okay, is everybody with me on that? All right, so I'm gonna show you a nice, easy way to do this because trying to deal with this with coordinates would be like really, really tough, okay? Here's where you're gonna to wanna to use things like your fillets, your offsets, um, and those kind of things, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna offset it. How much? 30 feet. 30 feet. So we're gonna come down here. We're gonna offset it 30 feet and hit enter, select the line and offset him up, okay? This gives me the line of that building. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. That gives me this line right here. Now, how do I figure out where 50 feet is? I need to come over 50 and then up perpendicular. Anybody know how I can do that? Anybody have any ideas? Mm -hmm. How could you come down this line 50 feet? Or that line for that matter. Um, so would you do at zero comma negative 50? Well, you could use a you could use a coordinate, okay? So you could <laughs> you could snap a line here, all right? And then you could come 50 feet, but you would have to use that bearing that we just typed in. That yeah. would work. I'm gonna show you another way you could do it. If you drew a circle, if we snap the circle to the end point of that line, then that distance should be how long? 50. 50 feet. So if we do a radius of 50 feet, mm -hmm. 
where that circle crosses that line, guess what you got? You have the start point of your, you have the start point of your, um, uh, your footprint, okay? And yep. then you can go in and start doing offsets. So it's gonna be a bunch of offsets and it's gonna be a bunch of fillets. Okay, did everybody see what I'm kind of getting at there? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to this picture a minute. So I've got that corner right there tagged, right? Where the circle crosses the line. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. So if we come up, um, if we come up this distance, we can offset that distance. So that distance is 20 feet, eight inches. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna handle that. We're gonna come off this line, 20 feet, eight inches. So I'm gonna offset 20 feet, eight inches. Select this guy and that guy. Are we good with that? Yep. Always have a hard time. Yep. Now you're you've got you're gonna have this recording too. You can look back at too. All right, so, all right. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm just uh, I just don't forget you'll have that. So we're gonna go offset twenty feet eight inches. Offset this line. Okay. So I need to connect a line from this line to this line perpendicular. So who can tell me how we'll do that? The uh, perpendicular O snap? Yep. So I'm going to go under the line and I'm going to snap intersection first and then I'm going to snap perpendicular second. Now I'm in business because if I take this circle and delete it and I go into fill it, radius of zero. I can now trim that, and I can now trim that. See how we're gonna do this now? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a bunch of offsets, and it's gonna be a bunch of O snaps. So, I mean, actually not even that many. So once you get rolling, it should go pretty quick. Now we get the idea then? Mm -hmm. Perfect, okay. So. The last thing it asks you to do here is put a north arrow in for me. I don't care what it looks like exactly, just make sure that it points due north. So in that instance, all that means is you're drawing a line parallel with X. Just make sure you're drawing it parallel with X, okay? So literally your north arrow can be something like that, and then you come down and then you can oh snap that perp. Okay, just make it a, a nice, you know, kind of looking north arrow, just similar to that. Okay, that'll be the last thing that you'll do. And since we're not printing, um, yeah, we, we don't have it. Does anybody, has anybody tried printing at home, by the way? Yeah. Did it work for you? Yeah. Okay, did you print it to fit or did you actually do it to scale? Um, I did it to scale on one and I feel like I had to do it to fit on the second one. Okay, it shouldn't, you have to make sure you're doing the uh, factors right. So if you wanna try that um, mm -hmm. on this one, yeah, make sure you're using a scale of one inch is equal to 30 feet. Okay. So you have to do that. And the other one should have been a one inch is equal to one foot. That might've been why you had to do the fit. You, didn't, you may have done it one to one. And oh, that's gotcha. not the same thing. Okay? Gotcha, that's probably what I did. That's probably what happened, yeah. I would almost bet that. Okay? Yep. Questions? No. Okay. Um, so that's all we wanted to cover tonight. Um, I need some of you to still turn in one. So if you're still working on one, let's try to get those in. So I'd like to get these graded. I'd, you guys should start looking this week for grades, uh, the ones that have turned stuff in for me already. Okay, because I'll. it shouldn't take me too long to turn them around. I just like to kind of do them all together. 
And if you have any questions, uh, I'm available. You can contact me. We can do another Zoom session. I'm going to go ahead and um, get this guy um, formatted, and I should hopefully get this up on YouTube for you uh, tonight, maybe. Okay. So hopefully this will help. Okay. Okay. No questions then? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn the I'll turn the recording off and anybody okay it's it's back on now what's up um yeah sorry it took me a little bit to get no, the no, circle no on no um so what did you do after you got rid of the circle you looks like you closed off uh well let me i'm gonna back it up okay okay yeah, there's the circle all right oh, one more thing did you get the line that we snapped in no, I didn't get the line yet. Okay, so this this circle was generated at a radius of 50 feet. That's important because that's, right, I got that. All right. So this line is that the, where the circles crosses this offset 30 foot line. That is where the intersection of that is where that building starts. All right. But it should also be perpendicular to that distance. Did you get this 20 feet eight inch distance? Yeah, yeah, I got that. Okay. So what we're going to do is go to the line. And we're going to do a shift, right click, grab the intersection, snap that intersection. And then I'm doing a shift, right click, perpendicular, and I'm snapping it perp to that line. Okay. Did that get it, Nick? Hold on. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look. Hold on. I think I might have done it a little bit wrong. Well, make sure that you're snapping intersection to perp and not vice versa. Okay, hold on. Do you want me to back that. mine up? Yeah. Okay. Right. You have this. You have this picture, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going into the line. Shift, right click. Do you see intersection? Yeah, I see intersection. Okay. Select intersection. Bring okay. your cursor up to that intersection. You should see a green X. Yep. All right, I got left that. click it. Pull your line out, and you'll notice it's connected to that point. All right. All right. Shift right click, perpendicular. Okay. Got that? Yep. Come up and touch that line anywhere, and you'll get that green perpendicular symbol. Once you see that, you just left click. You I guess it was it. right. All right, never mind. You got it now? Yeah. Okay, so when you got that line, you just hit enter because you're done with that. All right. Okay? Yep. And then I did a couple of fillets, and, and then you're, you're off and running. Okay? Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So remember, you're going to be doing a bunch of offsets, too. So you just have to – you're just going to have to go back to this picture – um, and make sure that you're looking at the right distances, okay? Like the 48.8 okay. and all of that. Okay? Okay. All right, great. Anybody else? No. Okay, great. Well, um, that's all we had. Let me go ahead and we'll...